There we go. All right. Well, Brett Allman, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Um, I've been working through your parenting resource. It really is a tome, a kind of a resource to have on hand for parenting on all kinds of different topics. It, you actually ever say parenting, navigating everything. And so this has been really great. And I thank you for that. Um, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute, but why don't you tell us just a little bit about what drew you to um, making parenting kind of your your big thrust, your big professional exper uh, expertise? I've been speaking for 20, I say 25 years, it might be 24. I've kind of lost track. Um, and I've been speaking topically, mental health, media, dating, pornography, sexuality, all these topics. I was at a talk speaking on mental health and a father came up afterwards and he said, Brett, can I ask you a question? It's my favorite thing to do after a talk. And I'm like, yes. He said, how do I talk to my daughter about sex? She's 16. And I went to answer. And before I could answer, he said, oh, wait, by the way, she hates me. And he said, go ahead. And I, like, I didn't, I kind of like, it was a little awkward. And I said, what do you mean she hates you? He said, so forget about that. How do I talk to her about sex? And I said, forget about sex. What do you mean she hates you? Because that's everything. Like, if you don't have a relationship with your kid, you won't be speaking truth into their life on media, mental health, sexuality, any other topics. And I came home and realized, I don't have anything on parenting itself. And I realized that often in the church, and I generalize, but we talk about spiritual parenting. And of course, we want our kids to love Jesus, but parenting is like a whole pie. Spiritual parenting is one component of it like family discipleship, but there's lots of these other pieces we have to address all from a biblical worldview, but it kind of drew me to then speak on parenting itself, which went to a talk and then went to this kind of handbook as well. I love that. Someone said years ago, I, I heard them say, parenting is relationship first. And if you don't have a relationship, you have nothing. And although a challenge, that's something that I try to keep in the forefront as, as I'm parenting as well. Well, the question I'd like to ask specifically of you today is we've been spending a little bit of time talking about media and technology, the great big hot topic in the Christian church, in parenting your children, um, spiritually parenting your children, but also now with COVID and everyone's uh, overindulgence in technology out of need, I guess, because of online schooling and all of that. I was reading through your chapter specifically on media, and I came to a line where you say, preparing our kids with tools to build their own fences. And that just really stuck with me because as a parent, I learned to just set down all the rules. But then I've, I've set up almost this struggle or this uh, battle for who's in charge. And as my children are starting to get older, I'm realizing that uh, influence is where I need to lean into over obedience, probably. So uh, we don't need to hear from me about that. I'd like to hear from you. Why did you write that? And what does that mean specifically? That, that thought actually came from a book by the author Tim Elmore. And his quote, and I might butcher this, was something along the lines of, it's the job of every child to tear down their parents' fences and build their own. And it's the idea of there's this progression of parenting. Uh, it, the cornerstone quote for the whole book is by Ted Cunningham, which is, they will not be with me forever, so I prepare them accordingly. Like, wherever you're at as a parent, like, I have two kids in university. So, like, my son just left for university back in September. You only have so many years to prepare them. So, like, if you're the one with all the media rules, if you're the one telling them what when curfew is, when they finally head off to college or university or apprenticeships or whatever else it might be, they don't, they're not prepared. Mm. It's kind of the over-parenting, but we do that in the media section. So, we kind of begin with this foundation of having a relationship with our kids, which is kind of what the book talks about. And then I think we need like clear, agreed on and talked about conversations. So it's not just, I mean, we could spend hours talking about media, but the goal is we want grade 12 kids who, you know, still have compassion and empathy. They're not addicted to screens, you know, they're healthy, you know, body, mind, and soul. We, we like, there's this whole list of things we want, but where we're at today and where we're heading is not that. We're actually heading towards addiction, and lack of social skills and, you know, the detriments of kids sexting and then loan, like there's all these negative things. So how do we walk through conversations on that? And I always say it's about teaching, not telling. So you can say to your kid, you're on your phone too much, get off your phone. Or you can say, 
Let's sit down as a family and talk about some of the reasons why we shouldn't be on our phone. And kids are up for those conversations. Saying get off your phone is just, that's about like you and not them. How do we teach our kids? I always use the analogy, it's like hands on when they're little, like riding a bike, hands on, hands near, kind of middle school. And there's this hands off kind of conversation as we allow them to begin to choose certain things with our guidance. And again, from a biblical worldview, but I have two kids at university, right? I, my, my, myself and my wife are not with them. So like, I, I hope we've taught them well how to live as a Christian with every aspect of life when they're away. And that's the idea of building up their fences and doing it with them. But it, it's the idea of building up their fences. And I love yeah. that idea. Yeah, that's so good. Thank you for that. I think as we parent, we need to be reminded regularly that our job is to help do just that and that our time is so limited. And so we need to set them up with the skills to be able to uh, navigate that for themselves. So again, thank you. I know that you are a wealth of information and I'd love to just tap into all of that, but I can't do that in this brief uh, little segment that we have here today. But could you tell us a little bit about how we can access some of your other resources? For sure. My website's just my name, uh, brettallman.com, and you can tag that somewhere. At the top of my website is all my social media. And one thing I say with media is, is you want to use it for, for like for me for good. So I follow speakers, pastors, thought leaders, like anyone who's talking about things that matter for me, my life, my faith, my marriage, I follow them on all things. Now, everything's at the top of my site, except for TikTok. I have just started being on TikTok and I'm actually doing um, two videos a week just for parents on TikTok. And so you can find that uh, if you just Google TikTok and Brad Ullman. But all my social media is there and you'll find links to my book as well, which is a handbook. And we're just about to start recording an audiobook for this as well. Fantastic. But my YouTube channel has 150 videos. I have about 1300 uh, articles. I'm more of a curator. My website's great, you know, stuff on all the different topics we need to deal with as well. And I do have an online course uh, uh, for parents on a few different topics, one on this parenting one, one on media, and then I have one for men called Men Navigating Everything as well. You can find all those off my website. Well, thank you so much. You definitely are a curator and that means so much to those of us uh, who are in the thick of it, trying to find our way through some of these really hot topics and issues. So I appreciate you so much and the time you've taken with us today. Thank you. Thank you.